Good afternoon, everyone. So I'll be um, giving you a quick overview of the um, attendance management project um, that I participated in. This um, project is currently in the control phase, which means the um, improvements have been implemented. They were implemented in July. Um, we've now um, done this process for two months. And um, our service type was facilitated, and we were taught to fish by the lovely and competent Carolyn Celine. <laughs> our team consisted, it was cross-functional, and it consisted of representatives from two areas, student life area, and the uh, faculty for foundational and intercultural studies. Those are the two areas that are uh, involved in attendance management for our funded students. Uh, just as a quick side note, because I'm not sure if everyone is aware, attendance is mandatory for grant-funded students, the college, and uh, students have only a small number of um, unexcused absences that they can have before their funding is canceled. Uh, for full-time students, that's eight unexcused absences, and for the part-time students, that's 15 consecutive days. So obviously there's a need for us to monitor and track in order to report to human services. Um, how did this come about? Uh, there is an academic advising collaborative that is still um, in process and um, this um, collaborative gathered data and through their data analysis identified that 41.3% of their time is spent on attendance monitoring. Now the academic advisors that are on um, that collaborative uh, categorized this as a non-value added activity. So, this activity needed to find a home. And because we have a contractual agreement with Human Services, um, they identify student financial aid as, the, um, uh, as accountable for monitoring and reporting on attendance management for their grant-funded students. So this would be a natural fit. Um, we also had preliminary audits from Human Services that actually identified gaps in the um, in the monitoring and reporting of um, attendance for our students. And that had partly to do with um, there not being a defined and consistent process for reporting in the program areas. So what did we implement? Uh, we now have um, six distinct process maps for process for funded students. Um, we have a document in defined policy and procedure. I have to say to that our procedure has been developed and has been approved by Human Services. The overarching policy for attendance management, for the college, college attendance management, um, has been developed but is awaiting review and approval from senior management. This policy would govern this particular procedure for grant-funded students. We also have documented and defined roles and responsibilities of staff. Now, um, how do we know our students understand this defined procedure. Um, there's actually a little anecdote that was shared with us at our leadership team. And the report back was two students were overheard having a conversation and one student suggested, hey, let's skip class. And the other <laughs> student said, you know, I can't. Um, I already missed this many classes and I can't go over that. So we know our process is working. The students understand it. They understand the implications of this process and having to attend their classes if they're grant funded. So what results did we achieve? Um, <clears throat> we actually identified um, through our cost analysis a savings of approximately $114,000 um, in, um, in the Faculty of Foundational and Intercultural Studies and we increase the capacity for the academic advisors in that faculty. We have now the right person doing the right work, so we actually have someone who is using our student management system, PeopleSoft, to enter data, track data, monitor, and report out, and communicate with students. So we're using the system to do all those functions, which makes it very transparent and very consistent. And we actually pulled some numbers at about um, three quarters into the term in the summer term. And um, we have numbers saying that for full-time funded students, the classes excused were 1,394. 
and on average, a full-time funded student misses 2.8 classes. The um, cancellations that we did for funding purposes or for funding reasons were 24. We've never been able to actually pull this kind of data on short notice. So this, this is a great, great improvement. Um, and we're also now complying with the Human Services Agreement. We had a, a full audit in the summer of our reports and that really showed that we had gaps in our previous process. And what we could do in our response is actually highlight the improvements that we were going to make with our new process. So, lots of happiness all around. <laughs> What tools did we use? This is the tool that was used by the Academic Advising uh, Collaborative, and this Pareto is the one that actually showed what they're spending their time on, and 41% this non-value-added activity was spent on attendance monitoring. So when we moved that and said, uh, in student financial aid, this would be the natural fit for it, uh, what do we need to do? So we, we don't have a defined process, so we went everywhere and actually uh, consulted and uh, looked at what the steps were and developed uh, defined process maps, which um, really helps. As I said, we have six distinct ones for funded students. Um, we did a lot of benchmarking with other post-secondary institutions, and we developed a work plan, risk assessment, and cost analysis, and those three really helped us in uh, communicating our improvements to senior management and helped us uh, move the implementations forward. Lessons learned. We've all learned a lot of lessons. Um, some of these we did, and some of those we, um, we would think that somebody who's undertaking a similar project um, would have to have in place in order to make it successful. As I said, we did a lot of benchmarking. Um, we have now the defined process with documented process maps. We did bi-weekly transition team meetings, and that was really helpful in looking at what the steps are, making sure everybody's comfortable with them, removing barriers prior to implementation, and resolving those issues. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of anxiety when you change process, and especially when it impacts the students that we all care about. So having these meetings prior to and talking about what it would mean to the student, what it would mean to staff, were really, really helpful. Uh, we leveraged our um, activities against other collaboratives, so because they were all going on at the same time, it was really, um, really helpful for us to see where they're at, where there are potential um, resource savings, so that we actually had the capacity to take this on in student financial aid. Uh, communication is key. We actually customized our orientations for students because we were already in the term when we made changes, so we went to classrooms and actually talked to students about. So we had a, we, obviously it's a different audience, whether you talk to upgrading students or you talk to ESL and literacy students. And uh, it would be great, I think, for the value improvement program in general to have a resource reallocation strategy in place. Um, who makes decisions around it? Um, when you save capacity, where do you reallocate? So where are we currently? Like I said, we have the um, process map signed off. We have standardized communication and orientation. We have automated reporting. And we have detailed job descriptions. And um, why that helps? Uh, we've, over the summer, because of uh, cover-offs for holidays, for instance, and um, summer students ending their term, we've gone through four people that have done this job. And it's been a breeze training them, and they've been able to take this on and just do the job because we've developed clear and consistent process. <laughs> 